Hey everyone, long time no see. It's Josh again with a video that I thought I made a while ago, but I guess I never did. Today, we'll be looking at the mini XLR connector and making a cable from mechanical keyboards with it. Here we have the connector right here. It kind of looks like a lightsaber. And in this video, we'll be using the four pin version of it. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, make sure to check out my DIY cable tutorials playlist, because in this video, we'll just be covering the connector by itself. Also, if you're interested in picking some of these up and trying it for yourself, I'll try to have some available in the store. With that being said, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And now, let's go hop into the mini XLR connector cable build. Let's go ahead and start by detaching our connector. All you need to do is hold down the button and pull for it to come apart. We're going to begin adding our mini XLR connector to the host end of the cable, which is the long part of the cable. To disassemble, the end of the connector should simply twist off and expose a metal part that can be crimped to secure the connector and also a plastic part that will protect the area that we will be soldering. The contacts that will be soldering to our cable can be a little difficult to take out. I usually use a pair of tweezers to get this piece out of the housing. Before adding the connector to our cable, I try to make sure to remove any slack in the sleeving by pulling on the cable. The clearance can be quite tight, so I find this step to be really important. The end of the connector should just slide on, and after that the plastic piece follows. Make sure to add the plastic piece the same way you found it when you took apart the connector, I'm using a pair of clippers to remove the excess sleeving. I do always leave quite a bit of extra sleeving to make adding these detachable connectors a lot easier. Grabbing my wire stripper, I'll go ahead and remove the jacket of the cable. To expose the wires, I'll be removing the cable shielding by first twisting it together. I'll then grab my clippers and cut it off. I'm sure there's some of you audiophiles out there cringing at the removal of the shielding, but for our application of keyboards, there really isn't much noise in our cable to need it. After getting rid of the shielding, I'll be cutting the exposed wires to a little under half an inch. Next off, I'll go ahead and prep the device end of my cable, which will be the coil. The female side of the XLR connector comes apart very similarly to the male end. Before we start soldering our connectors, I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process of adding the connector end and plastic cover to the device end of my cable. I realized after filming this clip that I added the plastic cover the wrong way. It was a huge hassle to disassemble, so I would make sure to get it right the first time. Aside from that minor setback, I'll go ahead and continue as normal in prepping the cable for soldering. So here's a quick close up of the parts we'll be soldering. If you look closely enough, you'll see that they're numbered. I'll be adding an image of what pinout I'll be using as we solder each of our ends. Here I'm getting ready to solder the male end that we'll be adding to the longer part of the cable. You'll see here that I'll be arranging the wires in the configuration I'll be soldering them in. I'll slightly trim all of the wires except for the second pin at the bottom to make soldering a little easier for myself. Then I'll go ahead and strip a little part of each wire. Once that's all ready, I'll get these staged on my helping hands and prep to solder. The first thing I'll be doing is tinning each pin of my connector. It can be a little difficult in reaching some of these pins, so I'd recommend using a smaller solder tip. Then I'll go ahead and add some solder to the exposed wires. To solder the male pins, my personal strat is to use a pair of tweezers to hold the pins as I solder the wires onto them. I find it easiest to solder the bottom pin first by heating the pin from the bottom with some tin on your iron. Then to complete the connection, I'll go ahead and solder each of the remaining wires.
probably an easier way to do this, but for pin 4, I like to put the connection back on my helping hands. Then I'll finish the last wire with the help of my tweezers. Here's what it looks like afterwards. Looks like I held the iron for a little too long on pin 4, but that should be covered by the plastic sleeve that's going to be going over it. Now we'll be going over to the female end that we'll be adding to our coil. It's pretty much the same process as the male end except I hold the little part that I'll be soldering on with my fingers. It's actually quite dangerous to do this if you keep the heat on for too long, but since I only heat each pin for a few seconds, I haven't really burned myself. I would recommend keeping the pins on the helping hands and using your tweezers to help you out if it's your first time doing this. Here's what it looks like afterwards. To be honest, this doesn't look very clean since I had to disassemble it after I realized the plastic sleeve was on backwards. If you're doing this yourself, I hope you get this done cleaner than I did. So now that we're done soldering, we can put everything together. I start by sliding up the plastic sleeve. There's a little prong on the plastic part that fits in the part that holds the pins. I'll add a little image for reference here. Then I'll go ahead and loosen up the metal crimp part that we found when we first disassembled the connector. As we apply the metal part, there should be a little ridge on the plastic sleeve where this piece should fit perfectly. Once everything's in place, we'll go ahead and secure it with a pair of pliers. It's good to take your time here and gently apply pressure to secure the connector. This piece needs to maintain its circular shape to fit back into the housing. After it's secured with the metal piece, we can slide the housing back on it. There's a little cavity in the housing that should line up with the pieces we put together on the cable. Then we can slide up the end piece of the connector and twist it into place to complete this part of the cable. So now that the male end is done, we'll do exactly the same thing on the female side of the cable. It's always good to test out your cable right after soldering, but here's me testing out the finished cable with a GMMK Pro. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you found it valuable in any way, hitting the like button and subscribing helps out the channel a lot. Also feel free to check out the links in the description below. Thanks again, and make wise choices.